with more of the Bob Bomb theme. Ooh. It's time, Bunny. Yes, it is. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here on the Pope on Film podcast to finally and eventually country line dance our way into discussing our creepy, kooky, mysterious, spooky, and altogether ooky movie of the week. And this week, we discuss a great Halloween treat, great film for our Halloween episode, recording this on Halloween. The 1968 Lucha Libre monster movie, Santo y Blue Demon contra los Monstruos. In English, that translates to Santo and Blue Demon versus the Monsters. In English! I was really yes. proud that I found this movie in English. Oh, very excited to watch an El Santo movie that I can actually understand. Because I'm not really a Mexican. I'm more of a Mexican. And I don't know Spanish. I, 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 I remember the joy I felt when I realized that the episodes of um, Chesperito that are on uh, Netflix, you can put uh, closed captioning in English so for the first time I could understand what this long-running uh, Spanish kids show actually was about. Uh, anyway, uh, the monsters in question. Frankenstein, the mummy, the wolfman, two vampires, and the rest. Now, I, think I you really, can say there's, I really, there's really do appreciate that you found this in English, but out of the three Santo movies we've seen... This is probably the one that needed the subtitles the least. The least, yeah. Yeah, I realized that. That like I was so excited to see an El Santo movie where I understand I, where I understood what they were saying and then you watch the movie and it's like you do not need these fucking subtitles, you know? No. Like understanding what they're saying ab adds absolutely nothing to this fucking movie. <laughs> no. At all. So anyway, that's why I'm all dressed up in my uh, Lucha Underground shirt, my uh, winter Rey Mysterio hat. Of course, I'm wearing a Speedo underneath my pants just to get in the right spirit. I have also, I wanted to get into a Lucha Libre spirit, so I also have been uh, popping pills all day. Yeah. Uh, I have been doing a bunch of cocaine. And then later, I'm just going to kill all of my kids and leave Bibles next to their bodies. Yeah. You know, like like good wrestlers. I also plan to be uh, falling off to the roof and then uh, dying tomorrow of a heart attack. So, professional wrestling! Yes. Hooray! The last El Santo films we saw were... Uh, <coughs> I I I remember when we did El Santo versus the Martian. Uh, I remember that, but I had forgotten that we did two weeks of El Santo movies, and they were so long ago. Episode ninety-seven, El yeah. Santo contra la invasión de los marcianos, and then the next week, episode ninety-eight, El Santo y Blue Demon contra Dracula y el hombre lobo. AKA oh, okay. Dracula and the El Santo versus El Santo and Blue Demon versus Dracula and the Wolfman because there's a, a a vampire and the vampire's bride in this week's movie, but not they're not it's not Dracula it's just hey we got a vampire yeah and these this week's movie was from the sixties that movie we saw. Uh, El Santo y Blue Demon contra Dracula y El Hombre Lobo. That was from the 70s. So different yeah. feel, different vibe. So to be clear, this week's film is not that one. So uh, it, that film was a 1973 movie. And I so I went and listened to that episode, episode 98. It's really weird because Eleanor had just recently been born. 
And so you can hear the baby crying in the background. And I go into this long conversation when we're supposed to be talking about the movie. I go into this long conversation about how I wanted Eleanor to be named Theodosia because I was really into Hamilton at the time. But yeah, Natasha yeah. didn't want to call the baby Theodosia. But since then, since episode 98, Natasha has fallen in love with a cover of a Hamilton song called <laughs> Dear Theodosia. And now, um, finally, I get vindication. Natasha's like, yeah, we should have named Eleanor Theodosia. No. Oh, gee, Steve, I was 100% wrong, she said. <laughs> You absolutely <coughs> should have played the song for me so we could have named her Theodosia Galindo. Yes. I don't know if they can hear you from outside, but my wife said that, uh, it, that I am wrong and that she didn't agree to it, but that if I had played her the song at that time, then maybe there would have been a better chance that we would have named Eleanor Theodosia. But it's a real trip in, of an episode to listen to. It's so long ago. In Eleanor's a parallel in, universe. Yeah, basically. So, yeah, fun fact, in El Santo y Blue Dimon contra Dracula y el Hombre Lobo, the werewolf's name is Rufus Rex. Nice. Which I love. I love Rufus Rex. This week's movie is only one year away from uh, El Santo versus the Martians. And that's a big trip because they feel like they're from entirely different decades. Yeah. Because uh, El Santo and the invasions of the Martians, that's black and white, and it's really cheesy. And this one's in color, and it's it's got... A bit of a swinging 60s vibe. Sometimes it feels like they're playing, like, Scooby-Doo music, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, but uh, apparently in between El Santo and the Martians and El, El Santo versus the Monsters, uh, uh, shit went color. Yeah. And that's a big difference. So with the addition of color to the El Santo movies... You know, this is one of the first films that El Santo did in color, and that I feel that, at least in the beginning, that gives the film less of a, hey, I'm going to watch a shitty El Santo movie, and more of, I don't know, a big fight feel. But you know, because like. Do you think that they made that decision based on having gotten the wrestling, the color wrestling stock footage? Possibly. Because it, 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 I just feel that there's a difference of like, you know, back in the day on TV where it would be, where, where a big portion of the advertising would just be, this show is in color, you know? Yes. Like that was an entire show from Walt Disney. The world is a carousel of color. Yeah. So like, it, like a... Cop Patrol Cops in color. You know, yes. that, that was like an advertisement. So I feel that like El Santo versus the Martians, yes, El Santo fights Martians. Hooray. But even though this film is in no way better than El Santo versus the Martians, you still get El Santo now in color. So, yes. so it just, it feels like they're trying to make it more important, at least, you know? Well, it was nice to see that Blue Demon was really blue. Yes, that was really good. There's one fucking fly that's trying to land on the screen, and I've been trying to shush it away, but now I realize that that would probably be a kick-ass looking effect. So I'm hoping well, that the well, fly just lands right here. But then it would also make this podcast like the video from The Ring... Yeah. So anybody who watched this episode of the podcast would, like, die in a week? Okay, the fly is almost there. Just just go a little bit this way. And you... Uh, oh, damn it. Okay. You flew in front of the screen, but no, just go down. Just go down. Just go a little bit down. A little bit more. A little bit more, fly. A little bit more. 
little bit more, little bit more. Oh, it's almost there. It's almost there. You're so close to fly. Damn it. Okay. Shit. That was so fucking close. Okay. I'm gonna, we're on fly watch now okay. for that. But uh, here's, and then, here's and then an anybody idea. Watching the pal, the, watching the, this podcast? If anyone is listening to this, they're totally lost. Right? Yeah. Ma- yeah. Mal will crawl out of the screen and kill them. Yeah. I'm pretty excited for the possibility of the fly just landing yeah. right there. Okay. So uh, I know a lot of monsters listen to this podcast. Yes. This podcast is huge in Transylvania. Uh, <laughs> so I headed north to Pennsylvania because it sounded like Transylvania, and everyone knows that is cool. Yes. I disguised myself as a regular all-American Yankee doodle dandy. Yes. So, so we're really big in uh, Transylvania and Pennsylvania. Uh, so if Frankenstein's monster is listening... You really should consider changing your name to Spanish, where apparently your name in Spanish is Frankenstein. Yes. And it's like, holy shit, Frankenstein. Oh, my God. Get the torches and pitchforks, motherfucker. We're going to have a Frankenstein barbecue, but Frankenstein. Oh, my God. Get out the, get out the good China. Yes. Frankenstein is here. You know he's bringing chocolates. Frankenstein, you have to find a deranged mad scientist and his gay deranged mad scientist friend to create you a female. But if you're Frankenstein, you're drowning in pussy. Yeah. Just period. You know? <laughs> Frankenstein. Stain smokes Cuban cigars and drinks and I, dosities. And I really, really, really appreciated Frankenstein's mustache. Frankenstein's mustache. F R A N Q U E S T A I N. That is the best. Okay, the fly is near the camera, but has not gone into camera range yet. Hopefully that will be happening soon. Maybe if I turn the light off, the ring light off. Okay. Oh, it flew away. Okay. Hoping. Okay, it's near, but it's not there yet. Okay, we're still on fly watch. Frank Westane. Okay, so apparently El Santo. I, I, I am a big fan of El Santo. Yeah. Uh, he apparently had a habit of making movies with whatever movie studio gave him the most pesos. Period. Yeah. So, um, so this is one of the first films he's making with a new studio, and they sure they gave him a ton of money, but also. As I said in episode 98, which I listened to this morning, it's an El Santo movie. It's not Shakespeare. And apparently this film studio wasn't known for the best fucking movies. Yeah. And El Santo's like, huh, these these guys make some pretty good movies, but the paycheck will be bigger. I'm going here. So, uh... Not the best movies in this studio, but also they're fucking El Santo movies. You're not expecting, yeah. you know, it's not Tenet. Although I would watch 20 El Santo movies in, in, instead of two Tenets. Yes. So there's a give and a take there. A little bit lower fly, a little bit lower. A little bit lower. I'm, I'm worried about this. So is El Santo movies live in this strange sort of universe. It's weird because you go and see a movie, and gee, I wonder if it's going to be good. Gee, I wonder if it's going to be bad. And then you leave the film and you go, hey, that was really good. I liked that movie. Or you go, hey, that movie was horrible, and I hated that movie. 
but none of that applies to an El Santo movie. Yes. They're all bad, and they're all shit, and they're all fucking wonderful. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, it's beyond criticism in a way, you know? Yeah, because, like, like well, if you were going to criticize, it would be like, where do you fucking start? Yeah. But but you get to a point where you just have to be like, okay, this is live action HR Puffin stuff. HR Puffin stuff. He's your friend when things get rough. HR Puffin stuff. He can't do a little because he can't get enough. Well, I, I, I lost it there, but that's it. it. My kids know HR Puffin stuff now. Yeah. Because I have compiled, uh, it, because it, your kids should brush their teeth for at least two minutes, around two minutes. And so I've made a playlist of 28 different YouTube videos that are about two minutes long. And I thought, hey, I can find some cartoon theme song, some kids show theme song that's two minutes. I can put it in here. No, they're all a goddamn minute long. But HR Puffin stuff has a long ass theme song. Because it has to tell you the whole fucking story of fucking Puffin Land, whatever the fuck. Yeah. So it's it, it's like a story. And it's like almost exactly two minutes long. And the kids <laughs> hate brushing their teeth to it. But they will sing along if I start walking down the hall now going, HR Puffin stuff. And, and they'll know what I'm talking about. They know HR Puffin stuff now, and I'm really excited about that. <laughs> really excited. It's been a I long road. Yeah, that was, my there was a, no. the kid in that who was very popular at the time. Now, I, I had always heard that he had died shortly after having done H.R. Puffin stuff, which is why you never saw him again, you know? Yeah. Until I finally looked him up, and, like, yeah, he died, but in 2008 of alcohol poisoning, Damn, who would poison his alcohol? Yeah. <laughs> alcohol poisoning. Isn't that you've drank in too much and you've died, but that <gasps> some dastardly fiend has yeah. put iocane powder in my alcohol. I like that idea. Uh, hey, tonight I'll be pouring one out for my homie from HR Puff and Stuff and his magical flute. Yeah. I really like the the spot on parody that they did on Mr. Show with Bob and David. Yeah, it, and, and it, it it was the the world of drug Massachusetts. Okay. And it was Tommy and his magical talking bong, and they got into adventures. Nice. And it was like Sid and Tommy Craft or something like that. And it was drug. Massachusetts, because it, it was HR Puffin stuff, and it was the 60s. These motherfuckers knew what they were doing. Yes. Yes, they did. Yeah, 100 percent. 10,000 percent. I also have a feeling that you could say the same thing for the banana splits. That shit was weird. Yes. Yes, it was. That shit was weird. And plus, they're like in a theme park. It looks like it, it, it. Banana Splits looks like it was filmed in Pirate World in Florida. Yeah, uh huh. You know, they're going down slides and. Oh shit, there's Jack and the Beanstalk. Fucking. There's the Thumbelina. Shit. Where's the Nudie Cuties guy? Uh. So yeah, like. like you could criticize this movie, but. It won't matter because it's a Mexican wrestling movie. You know, yeah. like, this is the opposite of cinema. It's weird. Like, I, I want to review it, but you can't. It's a wrestling movie. Yeah, I you mean, might as I mean well... look, okay, it's got, a, it's got a tiki idol with an oversized exposed brain that just stands there, and nobody fucking mentions it. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. How do you yeah. criticize that? 
It's do, fun. do we not have a, a, enough background story? Background story on them. It's like, hey, I'm going to write. I, I got a I got a degree from Stanford University, a degree in film criticism. I got a doctorate in film studies, and now I'm the, the most acclaimed critic in the world. And here is my scathing 15,000 word review on the Care Bears movie. Yes. And it's like, no, you, you can't review that. It's the Care Bears movie. And it's the same thing with most of El Santo's shit. Like, it's an El Santo movie. It, it's it's like Teflon to criticism. It's the opposite of cinema yeah. in some way that I'm trying to... But I love this movie. I love this movie. I'm not saying... I'm also saying this movie is shit. This movie is shit, and I fucking love it. It's got everything. It's got car chases. It's got Lucha Libre. It's got a hunchback... It's got a hunchback little person. That's two in oh, one right there. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, and, like, that was exactly my reaction. It was like... It was like, oh, shit, this got a midget. And I got all excited. And I said, Gene, I told Jeannie, this movie just got two more points. And then I was like, later on, then I saw, he's bald. And he's a hunchback. This midget is a triple threat. Yeah. This yeah. is a triple threat. Yeah. A, a, a bald hunchback midget. Zombie minions. Uh, the 60s Scooby-Doo music. A Frankenstein monster, which yeah. is different from a Frankenstein monster. Other movies have Frankenstein monsters. This has got a Frankenstein monster in it. Uh, a Cyclops, a werewolf, and, a mommy, two vampires. And, okay, okay, and we have to recognize how forward this movie was for its time to have the first open and completely out vampire. Oh, very much so. Very much so. The and then... Only, uh, the only criticism that I have is whenever the vampire came on screen, I really want the theme for Mr. Mistopheles. Nice. Uh, and, and I love when they show when they show the like the the mummy and he, he's he's they show his face and he's all dead and wrinkly and I'm like shit David Carradine yeah how did they land him oh wait no it's just a dead person yeah. I sometimes get those two people confused alive like David Carradine and then an undead mummy uh, what else does this movie have uh, spooky castle evil scientist uh, brought back to life yes uh, uh, clones it's got clones Yes. Fucking, this dumb film has it all. Plus, uh, this is the first of eight films that would pair up El Santo with Blue Demon. Yes. So it's kind of historic. And also, FYI, uh, it, a lot of people, because of these movies, a lot of people know Blue Demon uh, as, uh, oh, uh, the Blue Demon, that's El Santo's sidekick and friend. They play chess together sometimes in suits, in suit jackets. Uh, oh, uh, most people are like, oh, Blue Demon, he is the Biden to El Santo's Obama. Yes. They are a team, but sometimes they're separate, but Obama comes first. But... Uh, Blue Demon was a star in his own right and had already starred in nine of his own movies before being in this one. And so the problem with the producers and all of that is is that uh, Blue Demon did movies and in those movies he's the hero. Yeah. 
But El Santo is doing these movies over here, and he's also the hero. So it's like, oh, it makes sense for Blue Demon and El Santo, who are both doing movies together, to, who are both doing movies separately, to put them in a movie and have them be in the movie together. But the problem is they're both wrestlers. They both wrestle for the same promotion. And in that promotion, they are the most bitter of heated rivals. Yes. In the wrestling world, Blue Demon and El Santo are basically Stone Cold and The Rock. Yeah. Or Hulk Hogan and all black people. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, 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 The Ultimate Warrior and uh, Homosexuality. Yes. Chris Benoit and not murdering people. The, the biggest of professional wrestling rivalries. So the makers of this film are like, shit, okay. So, so they're in a bit of a bind. <coughs> so they're making this movie, El Santo y Blue Dimon contra, uh, uh, contra los monstruos. Like, shit, okay. Um, how do we make these two both be the heroes of the film, but also have it so that they fucking fight each other because that's all anyone in the theater will want because they're the most bitter of rivals. How do yes. we make them both good guys and make them both fucking fight each other? And that's why they're like, oh, it's a castle with these monsters and these monsters are going to take over the world. And also, I guess, evil clones? Yeah. That's how we get them to fight. And so it, it, the whole clone thing is just so that they can find an excuse for these two good guys to fight each other. And I think that's kind of cute in a way. Well, it definitely looked kind of penciled in. I mean, it oh, was yeah, nice definitely. that our mad scientist guy just happened to have a body duplicator. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. But I also <laughs> thought that it was really sloppy to just, like, leave Blue Demon in the body duplicator. Yeah. 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 You just fucking it, left him there. It's they a fucking castle. You got a dungeon somewhere? Blue Demon out, and then they just fucking left him in the body duplicator. Yeah. The the part that worried me is that I'm worried that El Santo is gonna hurt his hands. Like, dude, buddy, I know you're the world's greatest wrestler, but you're supposed to hammer in the stake. Yes. Not hand in the snakes. Yes. He's there. I've got this big snake. And now, foof, foof, foof. Dude, get a fucking mallet. Yes. Get a hammer. Like, don't and, use your hand. And really, the most unnecessary car chase I have ever yeah. seen in my life. Yeah. It was like, okay... You're going down a straight road. There are no turnoffs here. You're not going to lose him. So you, there's really... How much faster are you really going to go? He can see you for like two fucking miles up the road. Yeah. And, 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 and what's, with the, what's with the swerving? You're swerving just because you want to swerve. Serpentining. Yeah. Are you seeing? Yeah. Are you seeing they, chipmunks that we don't know about? They had to swerve because they had the sound effect. Yeah. So they had to use that. But yeah. they were literally swerving uh, for no reason at all. No reason at all. Absolutely no reason at all. Uh, fun fact: uh, Uber is not in Mexico because you don't need Uber. All you have to do is find El Santo's car and just fucking jump in it. Yeah. And apparently he'll give you a ride. Oh shit, now there's two flies and they're trying to bang. <laughs> they're trying to bang in front of my computer. They've definitely flown in front of the camera but so far they have yet to be on the camera. But we might get some fly porn, which is exciting. Either that or, or hey, what if this is the, uh, uh, what is it when you die and you come back to life? Reincarnated version of El Santo and Blue Demon, and they're fighting in fly porn. Yes. Wow. 
yeah. you really reached new levels in this podcast. I was going to have you uh, explain to us the plot, but again, it's a fucking El Santo movie, so yeah, don't was there think much that's necessary. One? Yeah, I, it's an El Santo movie. He's an evil mad scientist. He does some evil mad scientist shit and brings about a whole bunch of monsters. These all all some kind of universal monster ripoff, but yep. really not trying to get called on it. And a hideous fun. looking cyclops. What? And a hideous looking cyclops. Well the hideous cyclops was the creature from the Black Lagoon as far as I got. I mean he lived underwater. No, it's the creature no, it's the creature from the paper mache lagoon. Yes. Is what yes. it is. Or maybe it's the paper mache creature from the fake lagoon. Yeah. And and why was why was the lagoon the first place Santo thought to look? I don't know. I don't know. We've got to find this animal. And the next you see him swimming. He's like, I know where the monster is. Let me go to the lagoon. And he goes to the lagoon. And all he sees are two half-naked, underage kids making out with each other. And it's like, shit, I needed to go to the black one, not the blue one. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, is that, are you Brooke Shields? Fuck, yeah. wrong, wrong lagoon. <laughs> Fuck, I should have taken a left at Chihuahua, Mexico. And then he gets to the right lagoon. That was and, in the director's cut. And... What do you think El Santo felt after punching and and hitting and wrestling and kicking the Cyclops when he realized all he really needed was a pointy stick? Yep. Yep. Just a pointy stick. Pointy stick. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. What if he has a pointed stick? That's why they teach that in self-defense. <laughs> what if he had a pointed stick? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and just in case there are any gringos watching this discussion of El Santo, uh, El Santo was insanely popular in Mexico, more so than your gringish mind could understand. So uh, so here's, here's what you do, okay? To understand how El Santo was a bigger, uh, was the biggest wrestler in the world. Bigger than you could ever imagine. Okay, so get Hulk Hogan in his prime, like in the 80s. You get like 1985 Hulk Hogan. Okay? Then you add late 90s Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then you add the acting career of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Not You don't put in The Rock, the wrestler. No, you put in the much more successful acting career of Rock, the Dwayne Johnson. Yes. And, and then you get all of that together. You mash it up really good. And then what you have left, you make it fucking Superman. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because it's, 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 it's that he was a wrestler. And he was also on TV. And he was also in movies. And he was also in comic books where he was the hero. So he really was like like a like a uh a, a, the per, a prime Hulk Hogan, a prime Stone Cold Steve Austin, the acting career of the rock, and then you add in fucking Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, and the Incredible Hulk. And that was El Santo in the 50s and 60s and 70s and even the fucking 80s. Yeah. It's important to note just how big El Santo <laughs> was at the time. And I love this movie. I love all of these goddamn El Santo movies. And I'm really happy that I picked this one for Halloween because it's just dumb fun. And it's on <laughs> YouTube. You can watch it right now for free. And if you put closed captioning on it, we'll give you closed captions in English. But after watching this movie a couple of times, I can tell you absolutely, positively, 100% fact, the closed captions add nothing to this fucking movie. Just watch it.
Even if you don't know Spanish, just watch this movie. It's a fucking blast. Uh, they, yes. I mean, they telegraph everything. And plus, I, in the first five minutes, you see a black person. That's a huge deal. Yeah. For the El Santo movie. And the monsters wow. straight up. Straight up in the credits. Yes, I loved the opening edits where they show El Santo, Blue Demon, also from Quistain. <laughs> and it's, and it's a, okay, over. right up front, there you are. You know what you're watching. Okay, I, I, I've made the decision right now. That is my female last name. What? Frankenst Frankenstein? Yes, my, my, when I'm a guy, I'm Steve, I'm Dad, I'm Reverend Steve, I'm Mr. Steve. When I dress up and I'm a woman, my name is Danny Frankwestein. <laughs> What's my middle name? Uh, <coughs> I don't have a middle name, but I have a nickname, Sloppy Steaks. <laughs> Danny Sloppy Steaks Frankwestein. That's my 100% female persona. I'm deciding it right now. I, I, I love I that name. I thought your name was, was the Kelsey Grammer name from Money Plane. Oh, but, but it, that's the name I want to have right now. When I'm a woman, oh. I can't be uh, Darius Cornelius Grouch the Third, a.k.a. The Rumble. I Why think not? that's what it was. Huh? Because yes, I gotta be Danny. It's a Midsommar thing. I am the May Queen when I dress up. Okay. So I gotta go with Danny. So anyway, Bunny, I found four other El Santo movies on YouTube with English subtitles, and I'm hoping to do them all uh, in, in eventually, but not right now. I feel that El Santo is good in short bursts. Yes. But not an all the time thing. Kind of like how in the 90s they made Cookie Monster a person who sometimes eats cookies. Yeah. That, like, hey, we're an educational show. Maybe we shouldn't teach kids. kids. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't teach kids to binge and purge on a fucking dessert. So. I my broccoli first. Yeah, I remember like in 1991, like, cookies are a sometimes food. So. <laughs> so, yeah, El Santo is a sometimes film, but uh, that's not what... Do you have anything more to add to El Santo and Blue Demon versus the monsters? Except that it was genius. Except that it was genius. I loved just every bit of it. Frankenstein it. was awesome. His mustache was awesome. I think the werewolf looked a lot like Danny Trejo and I appreciated <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, the vampire was the vampire was just he, he, he just always liked he always looked like he, he would jump and do kind of a swoop. And then he just looked like hi I'm a vampire damn glad to meet you. And then it's so <laughs> like he looked. He looked joyous. And then it's so weird because, like, oh, this is probably a film that kids saw. This is just a silly kids movie, and it's just fun. Probably the parents and the kids came. There is a scene where Frank Winstein literally smashes a man's head with his fucking boot, and that yeah. shocked me. I'm like, this is a stupid S. El Santo movie, and then there's like. Five seconds of a goddamn hostel movie, <laughs> right in the middle of your fucking film. Why did you do that? I'm so confused. Who is this movie for? Well, come on, it didn't squish or anything. What? It, it, I'm so shocked. It's like if in the middle of Ratatouille, fucking Remy the Rat just just cuts another rat's throat. I, I, I find myself with with many questions. Many questions. Just many questions. But that's the beauty Mostly of El Santo. Circular, circulating around bare, bare brain tiki guy. Yeah. Yeah. 
love this film so much. Love this film so much. So, so that's it for this week's film. Santo and Blue Demon versus the Monsters. Ne- Those fucking flies are back. Stop. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I-, I think we're leaving out the best part, though. Okay? Okay. When Santos gets back into the wrestling ring... Oh, yeah. Versus the vampire? A- and we see the vampire getting made up and they're putting the mask on him. Yeah. Which they had to do so that they know he was the vampire... And then we get into the wrestling ring, and it's a much shorter, much more muscular guy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, El Santo was such a huge deal at the time that he would often just be like, I don't want to fucking do this scene. Somebody else in the mask. So when you're watching an El Santo film, you're, you're not always watching El Santo all of the time. Sometimes he's just like... Fuck it! I'm the biggest. I'm the biggest superstar on the planet. I'm not coming out of my trailer. Get a gaffer. Put him in a put him in a suit jacket and and a fucking mask. I'm just gonna keep drinking. So it's not surprising that like, oh, El Santo is fighting the vampire, and they just get some dude in a mask. Like, yeah, that's not surprising for these El Santo films. It really freaked me out when they said that it was El Santo versus Vampiro. And I'm like, shit, no, you're not getting the you're not getting the announcer from Lucha Underground. Yeah. That was his name, Vampiro. I forgot yes. I forgot his English name, but yeah. Yeah, he he was the he, he was the evil master of uh Pentagon Dark. Yes. In Lucha Underground. Now Pentagon and his real life brother uh, Phoenix, who was also in Lucha Underground, they are the AEW Tag Team Champions. They are one of the big names in AEW, and I'm really happy about that. Really? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, everybody everybody watching AEW are watching fucking Pentagon and his real-life brother, and they're the Tag Team Champions, and everybody fucking loves them, and they're there with all of the big names. It's fucking amazing. I'm hoping to eventually see, like, a it, oh, the possibilities right now to see a Daniel Bryan versus Pentagon dark match. Yeah. Never thought that would happen. I could see Phoenix versus CM Punk. <coughs> Fucking weird. Chris Jericho versus Pentagon dark. Like, that's amazing. Cool. But next week, next week, next week, I've got so many fucking weird ass films that I have been uh, uh, collecting over the past. Oh man, they're all just absolutely incredible. And I thought I was going to do one. I, I'm so be safe. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna click through some of the possible films that we might be seeing in the future. Uh, Thirteen Ghosts, Andy the Talking Hedgehog, Arizona Dream. Uh, Born into Mafia from 2007, fucking horrible. Um, Dear Dead Delilah, uh, Fear.com, Hanukkah, which is like a Jewish Halloween movie, Uh, Invasion of the Blood Farmers, Murder by Death, Madam Satan, Quicksilver Highway, Riverdance, The Animated Adventure, Okay. Uh, of course, Recep Eva Deke 5, Attack of the Giant Blurry Finger, Slaughtered Vomit Dolls, Straight Jacket. I haven't seen Strange Brew since the 80s. I thought maybe we could do that. Uh, the Ghost Goes Gear, Jim Cotta. I, I have uh, Viva Knievel. I have so many bad movies, and we were going to do one of these bizarre movies next week. But a movie just came out to download, and we've got to do it. Oh, my God. One of my favorite movies of the year. It's weird. It's bizarre. You will be totally unprepared for it. It is already on our shared cough cough. Next week, Bunny, we are doing the all-new film, Lamb! Okay. 
And I am so excited. I love this movie so much. I, oh, lamb. Holy shit. Holy shit. It's already waiting for you. And ah, uh, oh, I'm so excited to be able to talk about this movie with you. Okay. It's an A24 film. And God damn it. It's got that vibe of uh, it's got a bit of Midsommar vibes, but more of the lighthouse where you, you go into the film and you go, I don't know what this film is about. And then you are watching the movie and halfway through, you're still like, I don't know what this film is about. And then the <laughs> credits are rolling and you go, wait, what was that film about? And so you have to watch it uh, another time and another time until it finally becomes like this bizarre, funny, strange movie. And, oh, my God, I just saw Lamb, like, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, it, it has already come out as a digital download, and it, it's already waiting for you, and we're doing it next week. <laughs> Lamb! Oh, I can't say any more about it, but I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to be doing it. That's next awesome. week. So excited to be doing Lamb. And also, next week, we're going to be talking about Last Night in Soho. The Eternals, Six Flags, Magic Mountain. And so next week is going to be a, a really good episode of the podcast. But now that I'm looking back at this week, oh, man, uh, a spirited Dune conversation. Halloween, not on Halloween. Uh, Frank West Stain. I got to say, this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode of the podcast. Okay, good. I feel I felt the same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes because I feel like you're the person who makes that distinction and not me. But anyway, yes, I concur with your. Uh, I concur with your assessment. Thank you. <laughs> I said it so much that when I forgot it. <laughs> You both knew what the word was that I always said. You know what? This is what the Fast and the Furious movies are about. Family. Family. Anyway, I agree with your assessment, good sir. <laughs> so until next week, <laughs> I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and on behalf of Natasha and Maxwell and Mal and everyone else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Yeah, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Hey, you douche waffles and cookie Yes, Maxwell? And you, Pac-Man. Ellen, are you feeling good enough to help us wrap this up? Yeah? Yeah? And you? Take your time. We're just trying to wrap up an entire show. It's cool. And you? And you, Cookie. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. We might get some trigger treaters tonight, but I don't think we're going to. But I mean, we might, and we're prepared just in case we get trigger treaters, but we probably won't because Jesus. Skitty pop a doo wow. And break. Cut and print. Thank you, Eleanor. Cut and print. That's.